people call it clamshell. When you set down on it with your jack, let the jack or the ball rather, the round part of the ball go into this is you know obviously machined out. Right. Yep. Get, now the weight's off of the jack, and then you can easily just give it a thump. That right. slides forward. This all has a lot of powder coat too. It'll get looser as you use it as okay. you try to get some miles on it. And then put your safety clip through. So do you like this style of uh, tongue rather than the other kind? You know, the Versus an atwood with, yeah. with the horseshoe? Definitely. Okay. So it's, de it's heavier. For this size trailer, it's perfect. Gotcha. Okay, cool. Um, and then, like, um, here for this jack, you do have to shorten this far enough where this sand foot will clear the cross member back here, so you have to go up a little ways on it. Okay. And then this big through pin, I like to let this... I like to let the handle lay up top so it's not hanging down for something to catch. Okay. And this guy here, there's a little sprung oh, sprung gotcha. ball on there so you don't have to fish around if it's after dark or whatever. Nice. It's, that'll ride right there. Let your handle be up top. The safety chains. Now do you crisscross your safety chains? Always chain? test across the chains. The theory being if say the ball came loose or something came broke on the hitch, um, the it would just probably cradle it and you could safely get off to the side of the road, keep gotcha. it under control. Good idea, okay. Cross those guys. And then the breakaway, what the breakaway switch is, is that's something that every trailer needs to have if it's got brakes, but hopefully you never use it because that's for a catastrophic disconnect. Okay. The along with the these being crossed like that, hopefully it would just ride there. If this gets pulled out, you could say it wouldn't run into the back of your truck or get off in the lane or you know cross the lane of head-on traffic. And if you ever go through like a DOT line um, legally, you'll see people take this lanyard cable and they'll kind of lace it through the chain, right. trying to save three seconds of hookup. You shouldn't do that. That's why we put our own, we call it a heavy hook or I call it a dog hook. Put that right to the truck alongside. Okay. And then for the extra length, we'll take a couple cable ties Basically put like a figure eight in it. Okay. Give you plenty to turn because if this little plunger switch gets pulled out of here. We're locking up. This, there's a sealed lead acid battery in here. That'll take over and it'll lock the brakes on this because this is probably going to get pulled loose. So you've lost any control in the truck to stop the trailer. Gotcha. Okay. I won't put them on there super tight so you can move them if you need be. And kind of just go through your own routine every time you hook it up, you know, and do the do your little safety check. We'll run through the lights, make sure everything's good there. Just cut off the extra here. <coughs> the whip cord, um, they always leave extra. This is extra long, and that's just so if this end gets damaged, we can cut oh, off, gotcha. put a new end on it. Okay. So what we're gonna do? What I'll do with the extra here is just go around the A-frame tongue a couple times, and we'll t zip tie that off so it can't go anywhere. Okay. I always like to let it come over the top just so it can't get caught or damaged on anything. Right. <coughs> it's like three times around it's going to be perfect. Yeah, that's super long. Yep. On a PJ trailer, all the wiring harnesses, it's all a sealed harness. There's nothing, there's no scotch locks, there's no type of... Like some of your lower end trailers, they put, I don't know if you know what a scotch lock is, yep, but it's just a yep. connector that pierces. Yes. And like for these side marker lights, they'll, they'll run their wire harness back and they'll just scotch lock off of that to that. And they're, especially in this part of northern Illinois, yeah. southern Wisconsin, it's going to fail. So they just have a sealed harness, which is good. It's all one piece from stem to stern, yep. Nice. The seven way has got this block on it. Now on the forward, it's sideways, but that's the top of your door. It has a block on it. Right. This goes to the top, that basically locks it in there since it's a cylindrical plug in, it can't come out. Okay. So make sure that goes under there. Give you plenty to turn with here. Let her lay just like that. So you've done this a lot, huh, Dave? Oh, yeah. How long have you been working here at night? Uh, two years. I say before that, I was doing, I did all the hitching up of travel trailers and fifth wheels, hitches wow. to all wire. Your, your newer trucks are all pretty much pre-wired, but when I started in this game, everything had to be hardwired. A tow package on an early 90s Chevy or Ford or Dodge, it meant that they ran two wires down the frame and they were tucked up here by the spare tire. There wasn't even a seven-way back here. Because wow. They used to sell a lot more trucks that were just 
what you call a cabin chassis. You know, you may put a flatbed on it, you may put a truck bed on it, you may put a box on it. So that'll ride there good. Get that. Um, a couple things for you guys about maintenance. One thing Rick always suggests, this deck, when it gets this green out of it, the, the uh, treated, take some, uh, like a, a good um, Thompson's or Olympic, like you'd stain a, a privacy fence or a deck right. on a house, and, and coat this good with something with a good UV protection that keeps them from drinking so bad as the years go on. Okay. But you want to kind of, it won't, it won't accept that stuff real well right now when it's new, you know, new treated wood. Right. Once it gets kind of a gray hue or a bleached outlook, then it'll, it'll accept that stuff real well. You can put a color on it, but the main thing is UV protection because the sun really dries the right. Back. This has easy lube hubs, which means if the spindle on the end of the axle is machined or drilled through, what you want to do is every 1,500, 1500 to 2,000 miles, peel the rubber grommet out, right there's a greaser. Take your grease gun, regular old grease gun with axle grease in it, go up to that, about five or six pumps just to freshen the grease about every 1,500 miles. Okay. We would recommend every third year use or 10,000 miles, which usually only happens on a trailer that's pulled every day for long distances. Do a repack on it, bring it to a trailer place like us where the hubs are pulled, the grease is cleaned out, everything's clean so you can inspect the bearings, the races, the hubs, new grease, new seals. At that time, you've got the brake drums off with the hubs. You can clean, lube, and adjust and inspect those brakes. Make sure they're not heat cycling, funny color, or anything like that. Gotcha. So these so, brakes, how do they pretty much operate? Just the truck provides power, they're electric brakes? Your controller in your truck, yeah, puts out 12 volt or puts out voltage anywhere from two or three volts up to 12 volts. The way an electric brake works is the magnet, it's got a magnet in there, and as that is throwing power to these magnets, that sucks it against the face, and it's like an old hydraulic car brake, that when that magnet gets pulled against the face from the voltage, that applies the arms, and that makes the brakes work. Gotcha, okay. So pretty simple. Yep. Um, it, like I said, though, it's important to do a repack regularly, and I, I actually do my own personal trailer every other year, um, but every third year is good. You want to go on time because even if it don't get pulled a lot of miles, that grease can break down if it sits outside or, you know, in any right. environment. Um, and you start with new seals in the back, new grease. Proper maintenance. <coughs> Proper maintenance. The 15-inch 205 radios carry 50 pounds of air cold all the time, whether you're empty or low, you keep 50 in them. Okay. The, construct, the way a trailer tire is constructed... They've got a different, other than your, your vehicle, has a different constructed sidewall because with tandem wheels or with a trailer, they basically at slow speed, they have to fight each other. So they're they're constructed in such a way that they'll give. Gotcha. Um, so that's why you want to keep, you know, like your car or your truck, you can drop them down to 30 pounds and get a better ride. But with a trailer, you want to keep, and it's right on the sidewall. It says cold tire PSI, 50 pounds. 50 pounds. Gotcha. If you ever wanted to or needed to with this guy, <coughs> there's a bolt here. 916th knot, the bolt here at the back, 916th knot, unplug the two lights, the fender will come right off. Nice. These, these bar, or these 2x2 um, two two steel in here, they're welded to the frame of the trailer, but the aluminum ATP fender can come right off. Cool. The rails, every other or so, one of these, you look under here, there's a 916th uh, nut. That's got a bolt welded on the inside of it. You could actually pull those nuts. You can have the gates off, the fenders off, have a completely flat deck trailer. And with the PJ, it's just as strong that way. They're not relying on angle iron to make the things rigid or strong. Gotcha. Uh, maintenance 50 pounds of air, 50 pounds of air every 1,500 or so miles, five or six pumps of grease just to freshen it. Uh, the, the sprung suspension, years and years down the road, it'll take a lot, a lot of miles, but um, like there's little nylon bushings in between the, the spring bolts. Okay. If anything starts to get loose there, you just replace those bushings. Usually you do bolts, uh, spring shackles and all that, but that's many, many miles down the road. Okay. Your um, equalizer suspension is made to, made to lay that way so that it's always putting... You know, you got two 3,500-pound axles. It's, it's no matter how you load it, basically, it's, you know, it equals it out. Gotcha. Cool. I think, I think we're going to want to drop them one hole, what Rick was talking about. Okay. They're as short as they'll go now, and I like the height of it. We're a little, like we said, we're a little high now, empty, so when you load, put weight on it, load it, it'll be just right. Um, and I can rattle these down. 